Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to... Oh, sorry about that. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. I want to welcome you all, brethren, to part three of this verse-by-verse -verse study of the armor of Yahweh. And in a way, this is really a continuation of part two um, in talking of what our battle is against. Uh, as of now, we have learned about the propaganda and deceptive machine that our adversary, the devil, or our, that our adversary the devil uses in our everyday lives that will basically cause us to fall in battle as we war against the evils of the uh, spiritual realm and yes the flesh is part of that spiritual battle so in turn you gotta ask yourself can we honestly put the blame on Satan for everything great or small that we do I mean well you will be surprised to find that the answer is no we can't see the problem is we have the blame mentality we want to blame everything on everyone or every being or we want to blame everything on others for our struggles we want to blame Satan for our struggles struggles and yet we fail to realize that it's more than possible that the situations you find yourselves in is because of your weakness to stand up and resist the devil and so you buy into the scheme and you struggle with it now and whose fault is it that you chose to spirit be spiritually weak that's not the devil but it's your own the devil can't force you to do anything unless you allow him to unless you allow him to attack your weakest links with thoughts imaginations lust of the eyes flesh and the pride of life see he he plants those things into you. Yes, but um, ultimately it is you with the power of a God that you can have by simply submitting all of your mind, body, and soul to him that will conquer those thoughts and imaginations. See, what did Eve do in the garden? She blamed the serpent. What did Adam do? He blamed Eve. Do you think they were equipped with the full armor of God at the time of their fall? Well, I believe if they were, then they would not give in to the very thing like God told them not to do. Now look and read that simple story and apply it to you and search yourself without blaming the other and see where you are at fault and I guarantee you will find something. Ask your Father in Heaven and He will point you to the clean, to the cleanup process that you have to clean. You want to resist the devil so he will flee from you and then submit to your Lord and Savior, Jesus, Yeshua, and your Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, and that means 100%. And you will realize that the fiery darts will not pierce through that glorious armor that your blacksmith has prepared for you. So don't be blaming anything on anyone or anything because ultimately, ultimately it is you who have succumbed to the pressures and temptations that the enemy has placed within you when you can have the power to resist these temptations by equipping yourselves with the full armor that Yahweh has prepared for you always remember it's your choice Satan doesn't choose for you all he is is the planter of that bad seed 
And just like the good seed that can take root and grow, so can that evil seed take root and grow, if you let it. So, with that said, we are going to look at verse 12 and verse 13 of Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> this study is not going to take as long as the last one. This is basically closure before we actually get into the equipment, the uh, spiritual equipment that um, is entailed with the uh, armor. So, Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Now, principalities. Well, it really can be divided into three things here. Principalities. Um, if you look up your concordance, you see in G746, is it's properly abstract. It's a commencement or concrete chief in various applications of order, time, place, or rank. All right. So when it's talking about principalities, I mean you got the principalities of God and you got the principalities of of Satan, and Satan is the chief of this world. So with him being chief, he's got his ranks so he's the head and he's got his minions and I mean yes he uses humans but you gotta look behind the human mask you gotta look behind that mask and you realize that it is um, Satan himself that is controlling um, humans as his agents and then of course you have the fallen angels and you have the demons and stuff like that so that's basically what this is application of water time place or rank um, you can also get more information from Greek number 756 the word archomai and uh, that's the middle voice of 757 through the implication of precedence to commence in order of time rehearse from the beginning and then obviously in six and 757 we have arco a primary verb to be first in political rank or power reign or rule over so who do you have ruling over you if you have satan ruling over you and obviously you don't have the armor of god on and, and i'm talking all of it you can't just have one piece on and you know you think you'll be fine for example, if you turn to Luke 13:24, it says, "Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many I say unto you, for many I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able." Now you look at the word "strive." What does it mean? Well, strive. It means to struggle, literally, literally to compete for a prize. Okay, to contend with an adversary. All right. So you're competing for a prize. You're competing for that prize, which is eternity, which is entering in at that straight gate, which is entering in into the kingdom of heaven. And if you fail in that struggle, you could be in trouble. And it is a struggle. It's hard. Okay? It, it, it's nothing easy. It's, it's not going to come to you on a silver platter. See, most believers, most Christians think they can just easily, oh, I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus and everything is fine. As of as, as if they blame the devil for everything that goes on in their lives. No, search your heart. And I almost guarantee you that he is in your life because you choose to let him in your life because you are following the ways of this world. And don't tell me, Christian, that you're not, because there's many of you that do. And like I said, it's it's a struggle. You you can you cannot venture off the slightest to the left of that straight line or to the right, because if you do, then you are venturing away from the path. You are venturing away from that straight gate. Either if it's by one inch to the left or by one inch to the right, you have to be dead on. All 
And the devil knows what your weakest links are. So he's so yeah, he, he will fill you with these temptations and stuff like that, and it's up to you if you're going to succumb to it. It's not up to him. He doesn't force it. <clears throat> the word straight comes from the Greek stenos, probably from the base of G2476, which means narrow, from obstacle, standing close about, straight. I mean, it's narrow. Okay, it's a narrow, narrow road. And then you can't afford to go off a little bit here or a little bit there. If you have that full armor of God on, then you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish. Let's look at Genesis 32, verse 24 through 30. And here's a perfect example of what we have to do. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And the man said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except you bless me. And he said unto him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince have you power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, that thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that you do ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. As you can see, Jacob wrestled fervently, wrestled with God in prayer, supplication, and he was striving in earnest prayer and would not let go until he received the blessing. Oh, how we have strayed so far away from this type of dedication to Dad. And look at the mess we are in today. Because of a Jacob battle, he was alone. The hollow of his thigh was out of joint, but he pressed on and pressed on. And that, my friends, is the fire that we need to have in our dedication to Yahweh. Do you think the principalities and powers of darkness will want anything to do with that? They will try to persuade, but if you have the attitude and dedication that Jacob had, then they will have no foot over, foothold over you. Again, he was alone. He was alone. A keyboard alone. He didn't have a preacher or a pastor or a so-called prophet or watchman with him. He didn't have a book you can buy from a YouTube minister to get insight from God. He didn't have a book you can buy at a Christian bookstore from a wolf in sheep's clothing to tell him how it is. No, he was alone, face to face with his Heavenly Father, Yahuwah. He strived to enter in the straight gate. He didn't go to the left or to the right or followed another man's teaching of the word. Friends, we are in a battle, and it's a spiritual one. And from what I see, I don't see the fire that Jacob had. I don't see us succeeding in this battle, and it's closer and closer we get to the final stages of this age's history. When Christ returns, will he find such faith on the earth? Think of the war horse. You know, the horses they use to send out to battle. The oldest known manual on training horses for chariot warfare was written around... 1350 BC by the Hittite horse master Kikuli, an ancient manual on the subject of training riding horses, particularly for the ancient Greek cavalry as Hippike on horsemanship, written about 360 BC by the Greek cavalry officer Xenophon. One of the earliest texts from Asia was that of Catilia, written about 323 BC. Whether horses were trained to pull chariots, to be ridden as light or heavy cavalry, or to carry the armored knight, much training was required. Now pay attention to this. To overcome the horse's natural instinct. To flee from noise, which is their natural instinct. The smell of blood, and a confusion of combat. They also learned to accept any sudden or unusual movements of humans while using a weapon or avoiding one. Horses used in close combat may have been taught or at least permitted to kick, strike, and even bite, thus becoming weapons themselves 
for the warriors they carried. They didn't have no fear. They were on fire. They were trained for a purpose. And when a battle formation was sent and that order was given to charge, you think those horses like went halfway and stopped and said, oh, no, I want to be cautious here. I don't want to go that way. I need to turn around. No, they went straight in. And they didn't care whether it meant their death. They didn't care whether it meant suffering. They were on fire. They went straight forward. And regardless of what is in our way, regardless of what stands in our way, we have to press on and we have to go straight forward. After all, if you have the armor of God, what kind of darts or what kind of temptations are going to befall you? There's nothing should... Nothing should be for you. See, in most cultures, a war horse used as a riding animal was trained to be controlled with limited use of reins, responding primarily to the rider's legs and weight. The horse became accustomed to any necessary tack and protective armor placed upon it, and learned to balance under a rider who would also be laden with weapons and armor. So... Again, these horses had a fire about them. When they charged into battle, they were cautious. They weren't embarrassed. They had a job to do. No matter if it meant death, they had to stay steadfast. They put behind their natural instincts as they went out to battle. Now, believer, put that in your mind. Now, that is how we need to be in the spiritual sense. We need to put away our natural instincts, which in our case is a sinful human nature. Um, our carnal mind. Our carnality. Our pride. Our lust of the flesh. And we can't be casual or cautious about our journey, folks. It's a struggle. It's hard. But who said war is easy? It's not that we have a bunch, or I mean, it's not. We have become a bunch of lukewarm believers that Yahweh is going to vomit you out of his mouth. So what does that mean? Do you want to be a part of his vomit by being lukewarm? I sure would hope not. But it sure seems that way. Our father in these last days are not looking for a withered flame. He is looking for that fire within his children to withstand in the evil day which is fast approaching. He wants Jacob's out in the field, striving for the straight gate, not mingled with ungodly counsel. Harsh words, I know, but it's the truth. We are the loudest seen in church age, and we need to choose hot or cold. There is no middle ground. There's no middle ground, brethren. Now... We are in a fight against these rulers of the darkness of this world, okay? And again, I will stress, it's not humans, it is behind. It's not humans, it is what is behind the mask of humanity. And I must ask that why would we need the armor of God if this world wasn't a world of darkness ruled by it? This may astound you. Let's look at Revelation 12, 1 through 9. If you remember, I did a video on this not too long ago. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars that represents the twelve stars of Israel. Um, woman clothed with the sun. Um, or the stars represent the twelve tribes, the woman represents Israel. Okay. And she being with tri child cry, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, in prophecy, sometimes stars represent angels, okay? And uh, and we read about the time of Herod, and did cast them to the earth. 
And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And obviously, I do believe the devil's influence and his angels influenced Herod and his footmen or henchmen or soldiers. And what did they do? They went out to kill every single child under two years old so that he would possibly have gotten rid of the Son of God. And obviously that didn't happen. Uh, angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream saying, Arise, flee to Egypt, um, for they seek the child to kill him. So... And she brought forth a man child who was to rule of all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was called up unto God and to his throne. Okay, he was caught up. Let's talk about his ascension up into heaven. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared for God that they should feed her there. 1,260 days. That's a future reference. And then we look here. Now this is where it gets interesting, folks. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. There wasn't a place found any more for them. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. The whole world. Okay, folks? He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay, now I want you to pay real close attention. Let's look at John, the book of John, the Gospel of John, starting in verse 29. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Now, who could that angel have been? Could it have been Michael? Think about it, folks. And then what did Jesus say? What did Yeshua say afterwards? This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. And then look at verse 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Okay. He's speaking of now. He's speaking of the present tense as when this was spoken. So when was the prince of this world, and who is the prince of this world? It's Satan. It's the devil. When was he cast out? He was cast out at this time. Look at Revelation 12, 9 again. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. So, do you see it? John received the vision in the heavens of a spiritual symbolic representation of the Christ child. And as you can see in 12, Revelation 12, 9, Satan and his angels were cast out. And then you look at John 12, 31, the prince of this world is cast out. Folks, that's not a future event. He's been cast out. He is the God of this world. He is going to and fro throughout the earth like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He is not in hell, nor his angels. They are here, right here, right now. And it's up to us if we take up the full armor of God. Remember, he was cast out. Why would he be allowed back? Up like in the time of Job, after he was cast out to accuse a, you know, after he was cast out to accuse the brethren. Again, we have no excuse. We have to acknowledge that and seek counsel of forgiveness with earnest prayer, always, every day, with our Heavenly Father, with our Dad. Then, and only then, will we have the full armor of God donned. So that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. <clears throat> Folks, in closing, I'd just like to say, it is a struggle. It is hard. And if anyone desiring to have Yeshua come into their lives, this is the same thing they must be told. Not some simple prayer, and amen, because chances are they will continue as they were before they said that prayer. Folks, being a follower of Christ is not a, is not a feel-good thing. It's a reality. I mean, yes, it does feel good. You know, you know, it feels good that you have a Savior who died for you, who saved you. 
but it's a reality and it's a struggle. The struggle is only temporary compared to eternity. And that's what I want. What about you? You want eternity with God? Or do you just want to simply cease to exist? Eternity is a long time compared to this life in this world. And eternity with God will be a real good thing. Blessings everyone. Truth be told, truth be known. I know this has been a very, this was a very short study compared to the last one, but um, this was basically a continuation of part two. So um, hopefully part four will be out soon. But anyways, truth be told, truth be known, guys. Stay safe. God bless everybody. Bye-bye.